Okay, so you're getting my part one of the reunion after my part two of the reunion. So, and there's some things that I forgot to mention in my part two. I changed my shirt because I felt like the blue was making me look so drab and downtrodden. What's up? How you doing, Ray of Sunshines? I am your girl, Talisa Ray lifestyle coach welcome back to my channel listen i forgot to, to mention uh in my part two since i'm doing my part one after my part two they didn't talk about shiloh and phil at all because shiloh didn't show up what child let's go ahead and review my notes from part one uh, and see how I feel, what I thought. Because it was a lot more going on in part one than there was in part two. It was a lot more fireworks and chaos, honey. And I was here for it. I wanted all the dirt. I wanted all the information. I wanted all of it. Okay? All of it. I wanted it all. They owed it to us. So, I know there will be a couple YouTubers, or there are a few YouTubers who have, like, um, after the show re with reviews with the actual cast members. So, I'll be tuned in and you guys can update me you can update me send me an email or a dm and i am talisa ray even on facebook i'm talisa ray like holla at your girl because you know you know i don't really be watching but tell me when to watch and I, I maybe i will anyway that's enough rambling about that so tommy is sick with covid and for everyone's safety he stayed his ass at home like he should like you should if you have covid I'd be tired of people who just got Omar, uh, uh, the, uh, Omnicron, Omarion, Obadiah, whatever it is, and be like, oh, it's just a, 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 you know, it's just a little cough, a little cold. You was just spreading it around. Stay home. Stay home. Not five days, but 10. Okay. Anyway, so Tanika Ray is the host. Tanika Ray is also, I don't know if she still does it, but she used to be the host of Extra. Um, I actually did a show with Tanika Ray. Me and my mother did a um, makeover show called Head to Toe. She was the host. Um, let's talk about her for a moment. I don't like her hair. I don't like her hair. And this is where I'd be like, did someone, did they have like the stylist on the show? You know how they be talking about how for black girls, they don't never have the right makeup artists and hair artists hairstylists and things for us and I feel like this is an example of that but Tanika Ray wears her hair natural naturally so she should have been able to do something better than that like it looked matted and stuff um she's got a lot of energy and I feel like in real life when I well in real life when I met her persona right her host her hosting self I feel like that she has a lot of energy sometimes it's a bit too much energy but I think she I think she did okay. Y'all let me know down below in the comments how you felt about Tanika Ray's um, hosting abilities and would you want to see her on the next one as the host. So they start off talking about Sean. I actually like Sean how he looked, except for like something about the lighting had the darker complected people having like a red undertone, like some kind of red clay or something on his neck and under his eyes. Maybe that was makeup that they put on him. I don't know, but it looked weird to me. But I did like his gray suit. Um, it was fitted. It looked nice. But I do know that he talked about how he was feeling attacked when it came to um, Sabrina and her friends um, questioning him. And, you know, she apologized. She apologized once before, you know, with the look like, like I'm sorry, you know, that look. And then an official apology in front of us. I really wish I knew what I said here. Because I wrote something about hallelujah, pressure to something, Negro in question. I don't know what I wrote, but it must have been good. Negro Inquisition. I don't know. We're going to keep going. Okay, so let's talk about Sydney. I liked her hair. Um, the first time that we see her not in a party kind of dress, not in a club dress. But this dress is still very, very sexy, very revealing, very see-through at the bottom. I think if it had like a little lining underneath it, not a lot, just a little sheer one, just a little bit of a lining underneath the bottom, it would have been a home run. Her outfit would have been a home run and I would have been like, she was the best dress. 
But I still like her dress, I think, better than I liked most everybody else's. I don't know. Y'all let me know down below in the comments what you thought about her outfit. Um, so we find out that her and Phil are dating exclusively. Phil still looks like Phil in his slacks and a jacket and a t-shirt underneath it. I mean, of course, his suit jacket was uh, probably a tuxedo jacket and was more shiny kind of, you know. But they kind of did the whole matching thing. And if you notice... Anybody who was coupled up on the show towards the end were matchy matchy. Did you see that? Mm, let's let's because I'm gonna try and go through these clothes. Cause no, I wrote down. So after that, they broke them off in groups because we saw their little short little journey or whatever. And I wrote down, what the fuck does Cornelius have on? What the entire fuck does he have on? Somebody help me. Help me understand it. We seen some we we seen some never before seen footage never before seen footage yeah of Dante and Camille on a date and she talks about her uh, multiple personalities and who is this person and what is this person and I'm all like she's like um I'm all like you might be joking right now but I think it might be serious I also thought that that yellow dress was gorgeous on her skin I thought it was very um, very classy. Um, you know, she always seemed to dress nice to me. I did like the dress. I liked her dress a lot, actually. Um, the problem is I don't like her. I don't like the persona that she had while she was on the show or during, um, the, uh, the reunions. I didn't like it. I don't like that, that part of her personality, but, um, the yellow was beautiful. Her hair was appropriate. I thought she looked nice. So they do have like a little bit of a different like setup where not everybody is on the stage at the same time. Some people are backstage. How do you feel about that? Were they doing that because of COVID? I don't know. How do you, I like actually seeing them all out there together and catching all of their facial expressions at the same time. But I think it was because of health and safety that they kind of, um, you know, split them apart. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Y'all, I don't know. Tell me how you feel about that setup. She did say, because Tanika asked her, Tanika Ray asked her, because she likes to be called Tanika Ray. So Tanika Ray asked her, who, um, who do we have sitting in front of us now? And she was like, oh, I've been to therapy. They're not here anymore. And she said, you know what? I honestly want to say that it was giving her, her, relationship with Cornelius throughout the show was giving possessive and obsessive but that's not how she dates in real life it's not girl I can't see how that that you have a whole entirely different persona when it comes to dating I feel like you are probably very possessive but hell you have been proposed to three times where most women have not been proposed to one time. So I'm going to give you something, something to your method, to your madness. You must have something going on that's good. Maybe the cookies in the jar are delicious, soft, and warm. Child, I don't know because if you are acting anything like you've been acting on the show, every man should run for the hills. Every man should run for the hills. Sabrina on the sideline. There's so only so much editing we can do. Because she said that it was editing. <laughs> Baby, listen, Sabrina was not here for the games, nor the lies, or the pretending. <laughs> There's only so much editing you can do. Like, check. Cause I get they can piece your words and stuff together. I get all of that. But if every scene and every episode that you're in still gives the same vibe, baby, baby. Okay, she says, I'm not owning the possessiveness. You not? Because, baby, you should own your shit and work on it. I wrote, Sabrina is low-key sitting under the under the shade tree, honey, throwing all kinds of shade, jabs, shots. I was like, she is not here for Camille. And this is where I wrote down that I liked her dress. I did. I mean, I liked her look. For me, it was very simple, very classic, very classy, very elegant where she was the star. Like the jewelry piece, I want you to see my neck piece and I want you to see my face. All this from down below, it's elegant, it's priceless, it's beautiful, but it's not the star. I am. I liked it. So we about to break and Aisha was sitting there like, nah, you were very aggressive with the women. 
Camille, keep it classy, keep it classy. Because she expresses herself, it means it's not classy, or was she or was she talking about herself that she needed to keep it classy? I don't know. I did say that Cornelius and Camille uh did kind of look very comfortable together, but I still, you know, I still feel like it's a farce. I still feel like in a month or so, you know, they will have gone their separate ways. I still feel like, even though he was there very supportive, like, relax, it's okay, calm down, take it easy, whatever. He was in that space. He still looks like a clown to me. And the outfit he had on was very clownish. Just stick the red nose on, both him and Camille, and they'd be winning. Like, it was very, I don't, am I being too harsh? Am I being too harsh? Maybe. So I wrote down, I guess we're talking about Tyrone now. And to me, he looked very plain, very regular. Uh, yeah, I know, I know that men have limited options because I have boys, but now there's so many things that they can wear. So many styles and suits. He don't really have no pizzazz. He's just regular. He's just, it's nothing wrong with being regular, but what I mean, is he exciting? What is going to draw women to him? Maybe the vulnerability, maybe the transparency, maybe the openness. Like, um, but you have to sit down and get to know him. There's no pizzazz, no razzle dazzle that'll say, oh, I like this about him. At least from what I can see on the screen. Now, I could be wrong, and in person, he might got all the energy that draws you to it, but draw, draws you to him, but his energy is not, his looks do not. Like, <clears throat> so you have to either be introduced to him or sit and laugh and talk and have a conversation to probably see that he's uh, more than, I don't, boring. Anyway, I really like Carrie's hair, and I'm glad, you know, that she didn't wear them braids again. She's sitting next to Tyrone as he's talking about their interaction. And he admits that his delivery was incorrect. Okay. He admits that his delivery was incorrect. Um, and then went on to say how he felt appropriately with a little bit of an apology. And I think I was warmed. I normally write that down, but I guess I didn't write it down. It's cool. Um, and then they're here. I'm all like, where's Shiloh? Shiloh's not showing up. We need Shiloh here for the fireworks. Why is Shiloh not here? And part two, I forgot to even say, like, we don't even get to talk about Phil and Shiloh. That whole situation. Is she not going on there because she doesn't want to be put on the spot like that? Girl, face the demons. Face the music. Live in your truth is what I believe. But maybe, you know, for her peace and her happiness, it was not to be in that environment. If y'all know why she didn't show up. Y'all let me know down below in the comments. I wrote down uh, Carrie's dress was not it. But she also has a lot of grace. She's very classy. We didn't get to see enough of Carrie. Um, just the way she's holding herself or carrying herself and, and discussing the situation, I thought she should have had more time. So then they we pan over to Cornelius. And it we see his journey with only Camille and a few here and there with Courtney. Um, you could, you know, um, who else did he like talk to for a brief moment? I don't think anybody. And you know, they show us the whole country bumpkin ass, uh, uh, snippet, the whole, everybody in the back was like, what? Huh? Oh my God. And as he's saying that he chose to be in the situation with Camille, that he chose, um, you know, he knew what he was doing and that she was what he wanted. And he came in knowing, et cetera, et cetera. None of the ladies are buying it. None of the ladies are here for it. I'm not here for it. It was like he was in a hostage situation. Even there, it was like he was in a hostage situation. Like he couldn't be relaxed and be himself. She probably told him to wear that ugly outfit, huh? Did he choose that on this song? Lord help us all. He had gold teeth in his mouth. I was like, what's the point of the gold teeth? Why are they there? Are they supposed to make you look more rugged and rough? Keep your beautiful white teeth and don't wear the clown suit. The men weren't buying you, that buying that you were all in, into Camille like that. And uh, neither were the ladies. They got to see how you guys were interacting firsthand. 
You saw that there were red flags. You mentioned it, but I think you were too scared to walk away from her. What's that about? I didn't know who Courtney was when I saw her. Um, there were a couple other people that they didn't even talk to that started off early, like the guy that got booted off early. Um, the one young guy, can't even remember his name. We didn't, we, they didn't say much about them or they didn't even show whatever was, you know, um, recorded on them. Um, but I thought like, I literally wrote down, she looks like she's, um, going to a homecoming dance right now. The color is pretty on her skin. I didn't like her Forever 21 dress. I told y'all that in my part two and I didn't like her hair, but it's not me. I'm, I'm not the person that needs, you know, that needs to look nice. I prefer her wild mane. Courtney opened the door when they started talking about Cornelius and Courtney and their date. She opened the door by saying, I'm not intimidated by anyone, but Camille was very aggressive and a bully, honey. She opened the door for the lady said, like, ka, 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 ka. like I was like, okay, shots fired everywhere. Okay. Uh, they came in blazing, explaining why she was aggressive, you know, and, and Camille over there, hemming and high, making all them stupid ass, ugly ass faces. I don't know them faces. I make faces. I make faces, but I, her faces were the extreme. Um, I wrote down, it was consistent and it was a collective. They all agreed that Camille and Zadia were nasty and mean and bullies. Um, Sabrina says, I feel like Cornelius has regrets. You no, know, because she says, you know, he was pressured into the situation. But, you know, he, he that's when he comes with the, I chose this situation. I, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. We all seen that from day one, she chose you, she stuck her hooks in you, and that was it. And that's probably how she got them three engagements. Hey, she probably did pressure all of those men and then decided, I don't like you, I don't want you, never mind. Because you ain't got no spine, you ain't got no backbone, you can't stand up to me. Like, because um, he just claims that it was his choice and that he feels like he, he asked the right questions. What questions did you ask? How do you feel about waiting to, hey, waiting to have sex till marriage? Was that the question that you asked? Because that's the only one that seemed to be in, of importance to you. So then they, the brown girl squad comes up. And Sydney, I didn't know Sydney felt the way she felt, but she does not like them girls, okay? Specifically Zadia. I think her issue is more with Zadia than anybody else. She does not like her at all. Um, because Aisha wasn't brown enough and Sabrina is too light. And I was like, if these ladies had approached it differently, it would not be a big issue. Cause it does seem like you're trying to separate or put a line in the draw a line in the sand between the brown skin girls and everyone else. Um, and I get, you know, we talk about our darker complected women a lot. We talk about our lighter complected women a lot and hardly ever focus on the beautiful brown skin girls, um, where, um, you know, it might look like it was supposed to be division, but I don't think that, I can't, I don't know, because they're the mean girls, I really can't say. If they weren't the mean girls, it probably would have been more accepted. I said that in a live, um, but because they were mean and bullies, it seemed like a clique versus a group of women who are uplifting one another. It's a big difference. Y'all know the Instagram page? Did they put it down? I tried to look for it, but I couldn't find it. If you know it, y'all know what to do. Send it to me. Tanika Ray has the nerve to say, do you think you and Sabrina could be friends? And she said, she just cursed me out. Uh, Sabrina was pissed. And she said, I didn't curse you up, bitch. You been threatening me. Uh, she was like, bitch, you been treating me like trash from the beginning. And I didn't curse you out before, but I just said a curse word now. And the word was bitch. It was with all of the angry energy that you could muster. Bitch, you've been treating me like trash from the beginning. She had an issue with her. Why? I don't know. Probably because Sabrina came in there like, I'm the shit too. You ain't the only one that's fine. I'm fine. She said... You're mean and you're nasty. And Zadia was like, I ain't finna deal with this. And she gets up and she walks away and says, I'll be back when I calm down. All the time smiling. All the time smiling. Them people you gotta watch though. Them people be crazy. The ones that be smiling at you when they mad. They probably gonna fuck some shit up. Then we talk about, we go to Frank. I think Frank looks nice in his salmon colored outfit. And it looks like him and Mumin had dressed 
alike together. Like, surprise, she ain't heard from him at all since choosing day. Y'all said he was lying. Y'all said to watch him. You could tell that Mumin had that dress made. I think it would have been a pretty dress. It was a pretty color on her skin. It would have been prettier if it was shorter. I don't think that, um, I, I, I don't think that, um, yeah, I didn't like it. I didn't like it long and would have liked it shorter. Um, but Mumin says nothing happened after the show. Nothing happened after the choosing. Nothing, not a call, not a visit, not a nothing happened. He says the reason nothing happened, because he was over there like, be honest. He was like, he needed to regroup and process, uh, regroup and process. The process had taken its toll on him. He's not used to his relationships being in the forefront and people knowing about his relationships. Seems very like a very political answer, a very a answer that he's been rehearsing, you know, for the last few months that, you know, the show had, has been done. He then said he pulled back because things were not adding up. Waiting, uh, no, that's not what he said. Things weren't adding up, like the connection, the awkwardness. The They didn't look like they gelled or meshed really together. Um, if you ask me, we all, I think I said it on the last episode, on the choosing episode, they didn't, it didn't seem seamless. It didn't seem like they fit. It didn't seem like they really were getting to know each other outside of when we saw them taking dates. Um, I wrote down her wanting to wait for sex until she was married was the missing piece that that he was that he's very touchy feely very physical um really needs the like sexual attraction that that was the thing that was missing then turns around and he says we got too close too soon and she was like what where huh how uh -uh. he also talked about them trying to find connection. You know what I mean? Like talking about family and it felt forced, like trying to find where the missing piece or where they may have connected. And so it felt really kind of like forced. Um, he apologized, you know, for it coming out the way that it did at this time. And she's all like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm glad that it's coming out. I actually don't mind that it's coming out. But what was too fast? Because we didn't have nothing, anything, nada, zip, zilch, nien. Like what? Nien is no. So that, that don't work. But you, you get the picture. Um, and this is when he said it was uncomfortable and awkward. We all saw it. And then she said, I'm reciprocating the energy that you're giving me. You're over here holding my hand while we're sitting. And then I reciprocate the energy and then you want to say it's too much. It's a no. Then honey, Mumi says, listen, let me tell you something. Let me tell you about him. She read him. She said, the ladies were saying you weren't ready, but I was saying, I'm going to trust what you're telling me. I'm going to believe what you say. You ain't the only one going through something. You ain't the only one who's had heartbreaks. Listen, sir, do you know what I've been through prior to this? You have not kept your word, and that is the thing that hurts more than anything. After that, she was dismissive, honey. <laughs> her energy show turned off. He, You could see that he was trying to, like, get her to look at him or say something to him. And he was, and she was like, uh, hmm. I'm over it. So then here we go. We bringing up the, the shit that's going on with the ladies. We are in the ladies' lounge. And where we begin to see the mean girl in Zadia. I didn't like, like, it felt like Cornelius is now taking on Camille's mean girl energy. The way he laughed at some of the things that were happening in the room, like with Tasia um, and Zadia. Like, he, you know, it wasn't okay. I felt like him and Naeem needed to sit their asses down and stay out of their business. It was a lot of back and forth going on uh, with the girls. But literally, you know, you see Aisha, she was upset. Uh, but here's the thing. This is the thing that really got me was the Naeem thing. I was like, if he don't shut the hell up, like, what the fuck is he talking about? He's so uh, enamored, mesmerized by Zadia's beauty that he has overlooked her attitude the entire time to the point that he feels like she chose him. 
that ain't gonna last long. She don't like you. You are boring. You are dull. Um, no. So Naeem was talking about, you need to put it into context. That at the, on the first episode, or the first men's deliberation or whatever, the men's lounge, that eight of the nine men had chose Zadia day one. Um, I wrote down, but she ended up with none. She ended up with none. Okay, she has you as a consolation prize. Um, it was a total reach to say that the women didn't like Zadia because she was pretty and admired. Do y'all agree with that? Let me know down below in the comments because I don't agree with that. I don't agree with the reason the ladies didn't like her was because she was admired by the men or because she was beautiful. Because guess what? Those women were not ugly ducklings, okay? They weren't muck ducks. They uh, didn't look like they crawled out the gutter. They were very classy, very elegant, very educated, very beautiful women uh, that could stand in a room on their own. So him over there hyping her up, making these lies up, it's a no, bruh. Carrie had to say, yes, yeah, she's a beautiful woman, but it's not about that. It was about the disrespect. Carrie wasn't even there that long. So for Carrie to understand the disrespect means it had to start early on. It had to be something that you saw early on. Um, and Sydney was like over it. Sydney don't like Zadia. Zadia and Camille are definitely the least like people. Um, she was like, one of y'all men need to check him. Like, shut him the fuck up. Like, why is y'all just letting him go on and on and on and on and on about some shit that don't make no sense? Then we get on the, um, the comment about Camille saying, um, uh, I'll fuck y'all up if y'all, you know, get rid of, um, Cornelius. And she was trying to say it, it wasn't her, that that wasn't that, let's look at the clip, let's roll the click back, let's see my mouth, is it my mouth that it's coming out of? I was like, um, this is a lot. Y'all doing too much. What are we, what's happening? Girl, you know you said it. Own it. Own it. We seen you said it and you still said my hand was over my mouth. We, I didn't say it. We saw your mouth move. I just was like, this too much. Girl, bye. Girl, bye. You got the man you wanted? He won't be there long. You'll be getting rid of him. His feelings are, it's hard to be broke. We give it a, we give it a good month. I don't even know if we give it that. Then, you know, Cecilia gets up and storms off and she's like, this is messy as fuck. Huh? This is so ghetto. This is that, that. I'm all like, well, girl, now you knew that this was ghetto, okay? You knew when you were sitting up in them um, ladies' lounges and you was having conversations. You knew that the way that those two girls was treating everybody, specifically Zadia, how she was talking about people and Camille telling people not to let my man go. Um, you knew that this would be an issue. You should have prepared your little spirit for it. Should have meditated, had your sage spray, something, something. Anyway, she storms off and then we have to go to part two. <laughs> Listen, um, a couple things I didn't say before. I was disappointed that Shiloh was not there. Cause, and I, I was disappointed that we weren't able to have a conversation about what happened. I was disappointed that we didn't really dissect uh, Dante and Zadia's situation further. I just, I, w I was disappointed in uh, just the the handling of the reunion. Um, I was hoping that this is where we were going to get answers, but we didn't get anything. But I, I apologize for that. We made up for that. Like, I can't go for that. No, I... No can do. So they'll be back on Friday the 28th, a new um, DMV, but this time it's Potomac. Um, they've got seven men and seven women, and they're jumping right into it. So maybe because they have less people, we'll have more time with the actual prospective dating daters, the potential matches, maybe. It looks a little spicy, a little saucy. So uh, let's see how it goes. I am your girl, Talisa Ray. Thank you so much for watching my review of Married at First Sight this entire season, whether it was on time, late, or not even at all. I am grateful to you and for you. If it's your first time visiting my channel, click the subscribe button and become the become a ray of sunshine. Uh, click the notification bell to be alerted of when I upload videos, late, on time, you know, whenever. Uh, like the video because you like me. And I'll know that it's real. You like my hair, my shoulder, my 
Virgo sign that I'm a Virgo. You like my square earrings, my lipstick. I don't know. Um, Cause you like me. Go ahead. Share it with your friends so that they can join us in the next season or catch up on all of the old seasons. I'm going to catch up on Married at First Sight. Here I come, y'all. Here I come. Here I come, yo. Here I come. Anyway, I love you in real life and want every good thing that God has in store for you. Even if you don't know what that is for yourself, hugs and kisses and lots of love. I'll catch you on the next review.